This video contains the solutions for the um, numbers 4 through 6, free response. Uh, push your calculator away for these. Um, and let's see if we can, um, which parts we can do. So uh, number 4, A, I've got a function. Um, and this is the, the slope is given by this. So this is dy dx. Um, and f of 1 is equal to 4. Uh, find the slope of the graph of f at the point where x equals 1. Well, let's see if we can do that. Um, f of 1 is equal to 4. So that means... Okay, so this, I guess this is a little bit tricky, unless I'm, maybe I'm making it, making it more complicated, but, um, so x equals 1, that means we have 3 times 1 squared plus 1 over 2y, I don't know what the y value is, but I do know that, oh no, I do know the y value, I'm sorry, I'm making it harder, they told us that f of 1 equals 4, so we know the point 1, 4, so that's 2 times 4. Uh, and that would be 3, plus, uh, that's 1 half, I think, right? 4 divided by 8, 1 half. All right, that was easy. Um, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1, and then use it to approximate f of 1.2. Okay, so let's see. Um, I already know my slope, right? I found that here. So... My tangent line would be y minus y equals m times x minus x. And uh, you could leave it like that. I mean, that is the equation for the tangent line. Or you could put it, since we're going to use it in a second, um, you plug the number in, you can do it however you want. You can add the 4 over, you can put it in slope-intercept form. They don't care what form it's in. Um, so now I want to approximate um, f of 1.2. So that means plug that in for the x. So y would be equal to 1 half times 1.2 minus 1. I'm going to move the 4 over to the other side. Let's see, that's 0.2 times 1 half is 0.1 plus 4 is 4.1. And that's our approximation. Just to be clear, let's say that's approximation for f of 1.2. Part C. Um, find f of x by solving, oh, differential equations. We don't know how to do that. We'll learn that. Um, I was going to say soon, but actually that's off a little ways, maybe a month or so off. Um, and then use your solution for part C. So we can't do C and D for that one. Not yet. Um, all right, number five. The temperature outside a house during a 24-hour period is given by this function. And um, this is the no calculator part, so they want us to sketch a graph of this. Um, well, let's see. Um, the period of this, remember the period of a trig function is... Um, 2 pi divided by this. So 2 pi divided by pi over 12 is actually um, 24. So we're going to get one full cycle. It's a negative cosine function, so that means it's going to look like something like this. It's a cosine function upside down. Um, it's been bumped up 80, right? So this is its middle line. And instead of going up and down 1, its amplitude is now 10, so it goes up and down by 10. So that means this is its lowest point, and it goes through its cycle like this. You can try, you could plug those points in, you could try plugging in 0, 6, 12, 18, 24 to get that. Um, but we should, I mean, that's pretty um, straightforward pre calculus graphing trig function there, and the scale that they gave you. Um, was pretty helpful. Um, okay, so there's our graph. Uh, find the average temperature to the nearest degree Fahrenheit between time 6 and time 14. 
The average value of a function is something that we have not done yet, so I think that we can't do part B yet. Um, we'll learn that uh, very soon. Um, part C, an air conditioner cooled the house whenever the outside temperature was at or above 78 degrees Fahrenheit. For what values of T was the air conditioner cooling the house? So at or above 78. Are you sure that we can't use our calculator here? Hmm. Maybe we can. I'm surprised. A graphing calculator. Oh, maybe this is before. Oh, I'm sorry. This test is old enough that they, uh, this is before they had the calculator, no calculator. So I think we can use our calculator here because, um, if you think about like here, 78, that's not going to be at any nice point here. So, well, that would, that's nice then. You could use your calculator to help you do that. So here's the line 78. I don't want to scribble too much on that because that's part of our answer. Um, so they want to know, for what values of T was the air conditioner cooling the house? Well, I'm looking for these intersections, right? So I want to know, you can either set it up like this. You can say, I'm looking for where 80 minus 10 cosine of pi t over 12 is equal to 78, and that'll give us those intersection points. Um, I would solve that by moving that over to the other side. When you subtract the 78, that gives you uh, 2, right? So let's see. Let's go ahead and graph. You don't have to do the math. You can let your calculator do it. So I want to graph. 80 minus 10 cosine pi x over 12, and then subtract the 78 to the other side. Or you could graph that and find the intersections. It's up to you. Um, I like finding zeros myself. And uh, where should we be looking? We're looking from uh, 0 to 24, right? So I'm going to set my window here, 0 to 24, and... Um, that should do just fine. So we're looking for those intersections, uh, or the zeros, rather. So the first one's somewhere between, uh, let's say, 0 and 6. So... We're looking for the t values between 5.231 hours and the other ones between um, 18 and 24. 18 and 24. And that's. 18.769 hours. So we're talking about T, the times between those two. All right. The cost of cooling the house accumulates at the rate of 0 0.05 per hour for each degree the outside temperature exceeds 78 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the total cost in the nearest cent to cool the house for this 24-hour period? Um, Let's think about that. Can we do that yet? Cost of cooling the house accumulates. Um, accumulation functions are um, integrals. So it's 0 0.05 per hour per degree. So what they're, what they're looking for, I can't remember if I asked you to do this or not. Maybe you can figure this out. If we figure out like this area here, this area here is degrees times hours. Right, so um, if we do degrees times hours and then multiply by the 0 0.05 per hour, that's going to give us the total cost. So what we're interested in doing here is using the numbers that we got and uh, under 
actually we're only interested in the in this area, right? So we're actually interested in the um, underneath the eighty minus ten cosine cosine pi t over twelve minus seventy eight. We're interested in dropping it down. Right, you could subtract that area out if you want to, but it's easier just to drop the whole thing down, and we already have that graphed in our calculator. Um, so that's, let's find that area. Uh, 7, we've already got it graphed, so I want to go from 5.231 to 18.769. That should shade in that part for me. Okay, that's 101.927. Make sure I didn't switch any digits there. Yep, that's right. Um, now, what would the units be? Since we're finding an area, the units would be degrees times hours. That's like degree hours, which might not make much sense. But then if we're looking for the total cost, right, it's 0 0.05 per hour per degree. Right, so if we multiply that by 0 0.05, that's going to give us the cost. So 101.927 times 0 0.05 is equal to 5. Point, I'll say 5.10, five dollars and ten cents to the nearest cent. Right, so this would does that actually to the nearest cent supersedes the three decimal places. All right, and number six, consider the curve defined by um, this, and they want us to show that that's the derivative. That's just implicit differentiation. So let's see if we can do it. Um, part A, we've got uh, two times three is six y squared dy dx plus product rule on this. I'm going to call this the first. So the derivative of the first would be 12x uh, times the second plus the first, 6x squared times the derivative of the second minus the derivative of that is just 24x. The derivative of that is 6 dy dx equals derivative of 1 is 0. And uh, let's see here. Um, we've got to solve for dy dx. So let's get all those terms together and let's get everything else on the other side. So I've got dy dx times all of the terms factoring off all of the ones that had a dy dx equal to, and then I'll move all the other ones, two of them, to the other side. And then divide. Looks like uh, everything has a factor of 6, so let me do a little factoring here. Um, that'd be 6 times 4x minus 2xy over 6 times y squared plus x squared plus 6. And uh, x6s cancel out. And oops. Sorry, I forgot to factor. Nice here that we know what we're shooting for, right? So I can't really make a mistake. And that gives me what I want. All right. Um, part B, write an equation uh, for each horizontal tangent line to the curve. Well, let's see. Horizontal tangent lines are where the slope is equal to 0. And that's going to happen when the top is equal to 0. So. That's going to happen when you could write out what we're doing here. Horizontal tangent when dy dx is 0. And that happens when 4x minus 2xy is equal to 0. And that happens factoring a 2x out of that. 1 minus... Uh, Sorry, factoring out a 2x, that's 2 minus 
y, right? So that happens when x is equal to 0 or y is equal to 2. Um, well, there's one of them right there. I mean, that is when y equals 2, the horizontal tangent line would be y equals 2. Now, this one's going to be take a little bit more work to find. I'm going to go back to the original function here and find the y value when x is equal to 0. So plugging that in, I get 2y cubed plus uh, the 6. That's going to be 0 minus that's going to be 0. Uh, plus 6y equals 1. That's plugging 0 back into the original equation. That gives me 2y cubed plus 6y minus 1 equals 0. And uh, looks like we're going to have to go to the calculator to solve that once again. So let's see, I've got um, 2 x cubed plus 6x minus 1. And I'm looking for the zeros of that. And I should have gone back and done a standard window there. Looks like I guess it crosses somewhere right in here. So let's find second calculate. Oops, still graphing. Uh-oh. Okay, there we go. Um, second, calculate, 0. That happens when x, oh sorry, at y equals 0.165. So that's the other horizontal tangent line. All right, equations for horizontal lines are just y equals whatever. So there are two of them. Right? One of them, we just got the y equals, but this one, since it was x equals, we had to find the y value that goes with that. So whatever this crazy curve looks like, it has two horizontal tangent lines here and here. All right, part C. Uh, the line through the origin with slope negative 1 is tangent to the curve at point P. Find the x and y coordinates of point P. All right, let's see if we can do that. Um, so the line through the origin with a slope of negative 1 is tangent to the curve at point P. And they want us to find the x and y coordinates of that point P. Let's see if we can figure that out. Uh, we've done problems like this um, some time ago. So what must be true if we have a line... So the line y equals negative x is tangent to our curve. That means it intersects it only once, and it also means that the slope is equal to negative 1. So let's start by setting the slope equal to negative 1. Let's see what happens there. So I know that the slope is 4x minus 2xy over x squared plus y squared plus 1. I know that that's equal to negative 1. Right? And I also know that um, if these two things intersect, the intersection y equals negative x, I can go back to my original function and uh, or original curve and plug in negative x everywhere where I see a y because they have to intersect each other. So y must equal negative x. So what does that look like? If I substitute, that gives me negative 2x cubed minus 6x cubed minus 12x squared minus 6x equals 1. Right? So the original curve with a minus x plugged in for all the y's. Uh, it's minus 8x cubed um, and Sorry. Right, it looked like that. And uh, we can graph that in our calculator, figure out what the x is. And um, 
once we know what that x is, we can plug that in um, to either the original function or into this, and we can find the, um, the y. So let's see. So negative 8x cubed minus 12x squared minus 6x minus 1. And uh, I'll go ahead and graph that. Second, so calculate the zero of that. That gives me, looks like negative 0.5. x equals negative 1 half. And then, since we're looking for that point, you can go back and you should be able to get the same thing plugging it into either, uh, either this or into the original function. Um, let's see if we can do that here. So if x is equal to negative 1 half, then this is equal to negative 2, negative 1 half would be plus y, over 1 fourth plus y squared plus 1 equals negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and graph again to find the solution for this. Let's see, we've got Oops. Negative 2 plus y, or x, over 1 fourth plus y squared plus 1. And then I'm going to add the 1 to the other side. And again, I'm going to look for the zeros here. And there are two of them, so I'm going to have to figure out which one gives me, we might have to test it in both. So let's see, second, calculate. We're looking for a point P, so it can't be both of them. So one of them is y equals negative 1.5, and the other one is at point 0.5. And now I think we better go back and see if those are solutions here in the original. All right, so going back, I've got two candidates here. I've got negative 1 half comma negative 3 halves, and I've got negative 1 half comma 1 half. All right, that's the x coordinate I got, and those are two different y coordinates. So let's see if I can find the right one here. Um, plugging them in here. Let's see, 2 times uh, negative 1.5 cubed plus 6 times uh, negative 0.5 squared, I'm testing the first point here, times negative 1.5 minus 12 times negative 0.5 squared plus 6 times negative 1.5. I think I got that all in there right. Ah, no I did not. You probably spotted it. Let's see. Let's see, 2 times negative 1.5. Oh, that's the problem right there. That should be cubed plus 6 times that. 
Okay, that looks like it's right. And that's equal to 21, or negative 21, not what I was looking for. Okay, so let's try again, but this time with a y value of positive 1 half. So everywhere I see negative 1.5, I'll change that to positive 1 half. Let's see if that fixes things. That's an x. That stays the same. Here's another y. Uh, that's an x. And here's another y. OK, let's try that. Hey, that's equal to 1. OK, so it's this point. That's the one satisfied. This is the point that satisfied both conditions. It gave us the right slope, and it was, in fact, on that curve. Maybe an easier way to do that, but um, that got us the answer. Okay.